Hello, everybody. It's Monday. The do I do right We're gonna do. Oh, click that button for me. There you go. Oh, yeah, and you're gonna put your thing on. Uh, not really, but uh, can you can you click your button? Can you click your switch, please? Hey. Hey there. He is. Hey. Hey. Yo. Hey. Yo. Hey everybody, we're gonna do weird things here in just a few minutes. Am I a little blown out on this time? I'm just, I, I know, I, you know, Bryce. I'm, I, I didn't mean to say be, don't be a, do it uh, right you, now, you, but like, you a real Brian Brushwood about all this. Yeah, exactly. I, I, uh, I figured I'd saved up enough coupons <laughs> every time that Brian makes a a very specific idea about a shot. There we go. Oh, there look we at go. That. Oh, now I look, oh, look great. At that. Oh, I look Looking like a model. Like island. I should have. I should. I should be selling watches. <sighs> Brian, if you were a model, what would you sell? Uh, 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 lies on C-SPAN. Oh, <laughs> you'd sell lies. Oh yeah. Like uh, like, like like false freedom math. Freedom and democracy are real. Yeah. And, uh, Those are the lies. Yeah. I'm listening oh. to old Harmon Towns. You know they're gonna fire Mueller over Christmas. <laughs> Whatever happened to that guy? Yeah, whatever happened? <laughs> whatever happened to that? Uh, yeah. And also, net neutrality's gone. The internet's going to be ruined. Oh, my God. Yeah, same episode. Wait, uh, oh, uh, how did that uh, one turn out? Where's it doing? Boy, that was, uh, that was some incredible LARPing uh, we all did 10 years ago about net neutrality. <laughs> that also, and I'm only three episodes away from uh, Cheapy Pee Pee and the sequel, Cheapy Pee Pee 2, I Love You, Cheapy Pee Pee. <laughs> So I'm very excited for that. It might be the last like big roadmark episode. Uh, my Harmontown listen has almost come wow. to a close. It's gonna be it's gonna be sad. It's been a part of a very vital part of my where, life. Where's your stopping point at? Where they stopped, or are you catching up to where you began? At oh, some yeah. point? No, he's, no, no, he's no, 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 no. Where, 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 where they, where they stop? Yeah. Um, how, how, what? Well, so if that's net neutrality, what's the runway that you got there? Because that would be a few years ago. Initially, uh, well, well, remember net neutrality had a moment when uh, dude with the giant Reese's mug uh, yeah. was uh -huh. trolling everyone. Edge so, pie. Yes, yeah, so that would have been what three, four years ago. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So, so we're you, yeah, you still got a ways to go. We're into they're at Christmas right. twenty. I guess they've been off the air for a while, huh? Yeah. It's no, been, no, they went off the air. The uh, Harmontown and pre uh, That's uh, Bob right. Iger oh, were the smartest, the smartest people in the room. They like tapped out right before <laughs> like everything got f forever. Yeah, I, you know, I was looking at, uh, I was watching some some little J-pop music videos, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, there mark was... that off on your bingo card of things that Bryce is, <laughs> Bryce watches on his off time. And uh, one of the interesting comments was about the singer who had retired in 2018, and big blowout, all sorts of news showcases and concerts and stuff. And it was interesting seeing someone had posted a comment recently that was like, thank goodness she retired before coronavirus. Because yeah. <laughs> it was like, you know, big dome tours and concerts and that would that would suck happening. if you were like ready to it retire is a bit and then you couldn't though, do it. It's suspicious though that timing, those big gatherings of people, and then next thing you know, there's a coronavirus. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm wondering maybe if there's there, a little maybe culpability. There. I'm maybe just there. asking questions. Yeah, maybe there's just a. Who is this? Which which star was this? Uh, her name was Amaro Namie. The one who caused COVID. Got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got you. I walked right into COVID. it. I walked yeah. right into it. Yeah. Oh, all right. You guys want to do some weird things? Yeah. Hold on. Let's weird it up. Hold on. Before oh. we do, okay. uh, got got a new bit. It's oh. called. Um, uh oh. It's called. It ain't gonna rain till one o'clock in the morning. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna yeah, be. I already knew that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. You wanted the rain though. I mean, if I could, I'd make it rain. Could you were looking for a rain delay? I I bless the rains. I would and down, I would, and I would rain uh, on your fire parade. and brimstone. <laughs> yeah, I've seen fire. I would rain <laughs> fire and blood. Fire and blood. Fire Here and blood. we go. Fire. George R. R. Martin's fire, fire, fire and blood. Fire, 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 fire. Ready. Aim, was that was rain. that how uh, House of Dragon went last night? <laughs> Fire and blood. Fire and blood. <laughs> it was pretty good. Uh, it was pretty. Was good. it good? I thought it was good. Gosh darn it! Now I'm gonna have to watch it. I also think 
I think it was good. The, uh, the only headline I saw was Matt Smith is the saddest <laughs> man at the orgy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, that, that happened. I wasn't expecting to recognize a main character in the Game of Thrones show's actor. Oh, because yeah, <laughs> normally, yeah, normally, normally they're just these people that show up as characters and you're like, I've never seen them before. Now they're these characters. Yeah. But then the doctor shows up. And like, Why are you wearing a weird wig? <laughs> we're, it's we're, actually all evil. Your sonic screwdriver, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you couldn't have got bangs because your forehead is massive, my man. <laughs> like, you've got an Easter Island head. <laughs> There's a reason why in Doctor Who they had to hide it with like a gigantic, <laughs> with a, a gigantic floof because <laughs> at least then it looked some degree of symmetrical. Ay, caramba. All right. <laughs> you guys want to do some weird things? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Dude's hair, if he tilted sideways, he'd look like a Dr. Mario pill. <laughs> <laughs> He's pill pilled. He's Dr. Mario not, pilled. Like not, not just a pill, <laughs> nah, but an A. Dr. Dr. Mario, Mario pill. Yeah. yeah. No, no. No. I know my it's demo. Great. I know yeah. my demo. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> like I wouldn't say it looked like a yellow pizza. Exactly. It like Pac-Man. Like, like a Pac-Man. Yeah. Like Pac-Man yeah. pizza. Pac-Man. Like a Pac-Man pizza. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Should have saved that for the show. <laughs> Should have just put this yeah, in the this, show. Yeah. This is gold. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Castillo. Join us always with the three hosts of the show. One, Justin Robert Young. Welcome to Great Night. <laughs> and Man, Brian, I can't wait and to find out who's the third <laughs> host that you're joined by. It's going to be Brian Brushwood this week. Okay, yeah. Yep, uh, as it always yep. is. Uh, no seriousness. <laughs> We're not doing anything if you like words like telemetry and launch windows, nope. then we don't have all the it. answers. Uh, I do have a question for Put you. Put that guys. on layaway. Go ahead, Bryce. <laughs> We've talked a lot about Mars, colonizing Mars. Mm, here's I'm a already question. uncomfortable. Go no, ahead. no, 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 no. no, no, no. Good, go, 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 go. So, uh, uh, at some point, we'll need to colonize Mars, right? Someone will, it will need to be something. We'll need to grow plants eventually on Mars, right? At some point, we're going to need a Bank of America up there. So, yeah. What should to... be the first plant that we grow on Mars? Lichen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's more of Venusian. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you, got, you got to have a lot of. That's uh, on the gas moon. Energy. No, I was talking about grain. <laughs> oh, oh, no, we are okay. 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 Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rain. No, I, I I would say lichen or 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 any of the, the cold weather, you know, anything that, that Icelandic. Proto humans would eat. What is lichen? I uh, don't know. It, what... It's it's a mixture of uh, slime mold and moss, I believe. Um, okay, uh, that's that's not a crazy guess. I stole it from Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Mars. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, I would say yeah, some kind of mold. A mold. Okay. Now, why why a mold over say like an apple tree? Because um, it'd be harder to make an apple tree work on Mars. <laughs> okay, you know what? Great answer. Yeah. Great yeah, answer. No, no, no. I, I guess. I guess being reductionist and direct. Huh. Um, uh, uh, what places on Earth are the most similar we could think of to Mars? Yeah. Scandinavia. Say, well, what do they got? Lichen, mold, and moss. Yeah. So researchers have uh, come up with their idea. Uh, see, the there's the, the Martian soil has low nutrient counts. Mm -hmm. It has very high uh, salinity water, um, and so it is going to be tough to directly uh, grow grow anything. Yeah, they suggest pizza, alfalfa <laughs> plants. <laughs> Wait, what? Alfalfa plants? That that's some Great Plains nonsense. Well, why do you think? It why? Would why it, would it why be Why is it Great Plain nonsense? Well, uh, uh, how great is this plane? Uh, yeah. Don't don't alpha. Does it have need more than two of... wings? <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> Doesn't alfalfa require like a lot of sunlight? Hey, and Bryce, water? doesn't it require a lot of sunlight and water? Well, so researchers uh, have simulated Martian soil, and and they found that alfalfa was able to grow. 
uh, as healthily as it did in earthen soil without additional fertilizer. The mm. idea being that the alfalfa would be regolith. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. But yeah. basically, it would be... The way Mike Tyson would say regular. <laughs> That's right. <It> would... <laughs> hey, I'm putting sand. Uh, uh, re but... <laughs> re regolith being b basically broken up uh, rock, rock sand, I guess. It would be nutrients in the soil. They would basically grow the alfalfa so that the soil would come... Could You could come in and uh, uh, plant a new crop with uh, higher nutrients. There's still a lot of problems. Um, you uh, still need water. You need fresh water. Uh, there's a lot of salinity on Mars. So, so we, we would need to purify the water or we need to bring the water? We would either need to yeah, figure out a way to purify the water on Mars or bring fresh water, which is not really sustainable. Uh, well, a, no. a couple of the suggestions, uh, including one of Elon Musk's, there you go, check your bingo card. Um, <laughs> Is to uh, if if you fire a couple of nukes over the poles, the then it oh, melts then, then all you, of that polar yeah. ice, and and you get water, uh, which maybe gets you a a, a, a a lot of the poles are uh, carbon dioxide frozen. So all of a sudden now you have a lot of greenhouse gas. Mm. Uh, yes, you're highly irradiated, but guess what? Mars is already highly irradiated anyway. Oh no! But then you get a little bit of. Um, <clears throat> greenhouse effect and hopefully some liquid water uh the other idea is to uh if you have a uh, energy efficient method of doing so basically just just uh go out find yourself a comet made up mostly of water and just just slam it right in there yep or 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 <laughs> i guess before humans are there just slam it right in there who cares but then once humans are there then what you do is you very carefully throw it on a trajectory where it's arrow, arrow breaking the entire way around and just dissolving in water uh, yeah uh, or oxygen, in, in everything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and so but these are both ways of terraforming right uh yeah 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 uh so let's say you've got this alfalfa regolith in the Martian soil, what mm. would you grow with that? What is the next plant that you would grow, having already treated the land with oh, the, fungus. the regolith? It'd what? have to be uh, uh, because you would have living tissue that dies, and it needs to be, you know, yep, decomposed. Alfalfa mushroom. Now so we're, we're now so 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 uh, uh, <clears throat> weed is for <laughs> Venus. Psilocybin <laughs> is from Mars. Yep. Okay, so Brian. I, I would think alfalfa mushroom, we're well on our way to a Santa Monica coffee shop. <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, the 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 uh, bioremediation route. Any other ideas for uh, what is suggested as a next plant? A snake. Next plant. <laughs> Did you say no, steak? Plant. No plant. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, steak plant. <laughs> no, steak, steak fries. Steak fries. Steak fries. Okay, so so if you have rich soil, what's something you could get away with? And think about this. This is this is also this is first days of Mars, right? This is not so the, post colonialization. So, so, there, so there's so there's going to be sun it's going to be very cold and we have no idea whether or not we have water to grow it so so wait, wait so so we are saying this is a pre-colonization but we are assuming that we get some kind of purification or it has to yeah yeah i mean at this okay, point you would so, have so to we are, we are assuming that, anyway. that we are assuming that we get water but it is a very very cold surface but and it, it does get sun and and water may be a rarity, or it may just be very specific. You might, you may have to conserve water, something low. Maybe uh, uh, if, if 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 you imagine it like a video game, you know, uh, it becomes affordable to just kind of chuck uh, pods that land, and then you know, uh, spill their, their uh, they onanize <laughs> Mars, and then mm, they and then uh -huh. they they disperse yeah. their water. Did you almost there. say spill their seeds? <laughs> Well, yeah, but then I thought it was a more clever reference to say Odinize, Odinize which yeah. I, I thought that was pretty clever because I went another level. Sure, I don't know what that means. Oh, the sin of Onan is when he spilled his seed. Who? Odin? O o Onan. Odin. Onan. Thor's Odin. dad. No, that's Odin. Oh, what is this that's one? That's the other one. No, I you're thinking of the third meal of the day. <laughs> Fourth meal? Fourth meal? Uh, is it, someone say fourth meal? Okay, so the wait, who's Onan? <laughs> I, wait, I, 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 I'm no, I'm so, I'm for real. I don't know the story I, I, of Odin. Old, Old Testament. The okay, sin in the Bible. Of Onan. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't. I go don't back. see religion. I, I know. I didn't, I didn't go back into the crates. <laughs> I'm more. Classic. I'm more of a fan of the uh, the the more contemporary run. <laughs> says I know Nicki Minaj. I know Megan. Just in case he wants to be buried in a Jewish <laughs> graveyard. So <laughs> I, I'm not 
not, I'm not shutting anything down. Maybe I'm going to be into it now that you told me about this Odin fella. Yeah, no. He, his, his sin was that he was having sex and then uh, 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 spilled his seed on the ground. And and uh, oh. uh, uh, God said, ah, ah, ah. Wow. Elon Musk said, no, no, no. You know, yeah. It needs to be water. Yeah. What's God care? What, yeah. what, is he going to clean up? Did he make us in his image? <laughs> no, What's he doing up it's there? His, it's his, the first thing he says is be fruitful and multiply. And he's like, hey, man, uh, that's you're, that's not going to make a baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's a direct quote. Yeah. That ain't going to make a baby. Checkmate, atheist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, God to own it. <laughs> that ain't going to make a baby. So the researchers uh, simulated this Martian. It was a good reference. I just didn't get it. I just yeah. didn't get it. And I, I apologize it for putting this to a screeching halt. Because <laughs> I, I was ignorant. That's so on me. They tested the simulated soil with alfalfa as a fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And they found that turnips, radishes, and lettuces... Three plants that require little in the way of maintenance grow quickly and don't need much water were grown successfully. So Damn, we could open a sweet greens. Yeah, you could almost <laughs> make a, 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 a impossible burger. Uh, yeah, I guess you just need beans. Yeah, you could be, just throw beans. those. Yeah, I, just grow them. At that point, just grow it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> no, just bring the beans. Just grow it. <laughs> yeah, beans grow them with the bean small. biome. BYOB. BYOB. Bring, bring yeah. your own beans. <laughs> Well, hey, listen, you could be why your own be if you go over to patreon.com slash weird things and support this. Nailed this it. is an educational show. It is. Uh, if you want to be educated about Old Testament, Old Testament <laughs> about New alfalfa, Testament. then you need to go over here right now, patreon.com slash weird things. That's right. You get uh, early access to our After Things show all about creativity and being creators on, yeah. on the internet. Uh, as well as uh, all sorts of other... We're going to rip a dude's press kiss. Uh, uh, press kiss. <laughs> press kiss. <laughs> oh, press mm. kiss. Oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Bellissima. <laughs> press kiss. Come give us a fresh press kiss over at Patreon.com. We're going to rip his thing. press kid apart. <laughs> uh, uh, that's uh, uh, on, one of many on services after things. That, yeah. that we offer. We uh, will. We'll do that for you. Uh, what, one more planetary bit of news uh, that I don't think we spoke about, but mm. but we've we've talked on this show about uh, uh, lava tubes, uh, the the big old tubes on Mars uh, uh, and on the Moon. Yep. Okay. Uh, there was a headline I stumbled across recently saying that uh, if you peek hard enough, there are a few open cavernous lava tubes. That stay around sixty-seven degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, all the time. Where? Uh, I, I, um, secret ancient. They're, they're underground. NASA secret in in the moon. <laughs> uh, yes. on the moon. Okay, yes. yeah, 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 sorry. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but but basically, that's interesting. Uh, uh, you pick a few candidates, you cap them off, you pressurize that. You already got your temperature; it stays the same. Bada bing, bada boom. You, you uh, let's hope nobody pokes a hole in that roof. Yeah, that I guess that would be the question is pressurizing or <laughs> making you know like uh, it's uh, how do you? Okay, I'll tell you what, that, that would that would, great. That would be a great small town sci-fi story. Is like like the the emerging tube. community. Let's say it's maybe fifty years on or something like that. So so you've got people that have lived there for a while, so it seems a little normal. But then I don't know. The stranger comes to town, and boy, is he or she bringing trouble. And then maybe it's like the, the structural integrity oh. is compromised. Oh, like hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Your so, life is in a tube. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. Science fiction story, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so um, uh, the true history is once uh, starships get uh, cheap enough, uh, uh, individual multi-billionaires all decide that they want to pick their favorite best times that there ever were right so mm -hmm. what it's sort of like a uh, magic kingdom you know as you know frontier land and tomorrow yeah. land and whatever uh but then they cap uh -huh. them off but then but then at some point communication something something very good reasons um they they get cut off and they just believe that that the t the town has always been this way and then they find out that they're in a pocket of the moon well but even then even even if you if if if, if they know exactly where they are like your reality is defined by the people that are around you. So let's say it's a 1950s thing. They could know very well that they're on the moon and that's different than being in Cleveland, Ohio. 
But but they're still going to they, stay segregated. <laughs> yeah, like, but they, that, they, they yeah, look like they look like whatever they want to look like, and they act like however they want to act like. That, uh, that that's that's actually a, a major plot point in Neil Stephenson's book, The Diamond Age, which uh, postulates a, a post scarcity society with nanobots, where um, if you're wealthy enough, you would choose how you wanted to live. So there, the uh, the main story takes place uh, in a strata of society uh, where they have elected on purpose even though it's, you know, the year 24 or something or whatever, uh, to live as in the Victorian era. So they have parlor rooms and sitting rooms, but the real reason is so that as you come and visit your neighbor, uh, the nanobots have enough time to scrub you from any pathogens uh, of the outside world. And they maintain very strict social norms for hygienic purposes and so on. Uh -huh. uh, uh, anyway, it's, it's a fascinating idea. Nice. Check it out. What's that book again? Uh, the Diamond Age. That's two. That's right. Two books I've ripped off. For <laughs> yeah. uh, so we've talked previously about uh, nuclear waste warnings and kind of the considerations uh, you might have to do to warn people in the very far future of uh, maybe invisible environmental dangers. Have you ever considered that we might already have something like that? No, not until this very moment, Bryce. Go on. What would be, could you imagine what a warning side embedded amongst nature might look like? Uh, mm. uh, Stonehenge or... Forest fires. <laughs> well, what would Stonehenge, so what is, what is, what is this, what does a Stonehenge tell us? Uh, well, it... Don't dig in, in the center of these stones, man. <laughs> Good. Don't stand in the middle of all of these Don't rocks. Don't do it. Get out of it's here. It's a bad idea. Well, and, and I mean, that's the problem. If, if you want to create a perimeter, you end up drawing a circle. And a, drawing a circle around something makes it seem real interesting and yep. like you would want to stand in the middle of it. Yeah. Especially which is if one everybody, of the everybody like forgot why they made the circle. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and that was why one of my favorite proposals was the idea of create a religion, an atomic priesthood, where you have one commandment. Don't go there. <laughs> And so you just have acolytes who live and die for 300,000 years. And all they do is preach, please don't go over there. Don't go over there. Uh, yeah. But within nature, like, are we? Are, uh, or I mean, just imagining that if someone before today had had something like this, what might it look like? In a, in a previous civilization, how would they warn us now in, in what is for them the far future that there was danger and and we're buried just beneath the surface we we're going back as far as we can like farther than easter island giant stone head heads or something right um uh, uh, the thing that i'm thinking of dates back to about 1600 oh mm. 1600 okay so we're at an age where giant stone tablets would be on the menu um Maybe I probably just tablet that hoe. Sorry, the the warning. They tablet it. Uh, Is that also from the Bible or? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> explain to me <laughs> the story of the parable of tablet. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, you'd make a tablet saying "Don't do this," or there was a thing that is buried. Yeah. Oh, okay. So no, just, that hoe. Oh, <laughs> and then that hoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that I mean that's like a like a common phrase. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I uh, tablet. I, I mean, I've been studying Latin. <laughs> to Vladim. Yeah. Uh, hey, I know things too. <laughs> Mr. Onan over here. So old what? Biblical scholar. <laughs> Just call me not Mr. Ready, o. Not ready. Not ready for this linguistics <laughs> range, folks. Yeah. We, br we bring you range we here bring on the you Weird range. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Get, uh, can, I, can I ask for a hint hmm. sure. to the level of threat that we're. Yeah, what mm, kind of threat? Scary. What is it? Like like bed bugs? Mm, <laughs> oh my uh, god, that would be the worst. Oh, okay. Here's here's a great okay. Uh so, <laughs> it's like it's like the, the universal the threat is here lies New York. <laughs> I was gonna say, because because otherwise I, I ignored the warning sign on my bed junior year. <laughs> uh so this item is found in uh uh uh, 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 uh it's on the banks of the Elba River. Uh, and is written on it in German, Wenn du mich siehst, dann wien. If you see me, then weep. Okay, so it is of, of, uh, uh, it's 
era of the tribes that were in that era, yeah. and it is written on a rock. So written on a rock yep. is the warning. Mm. If you see me, then weep. Uh, so now we have to worry about what, what, well, what we're... Well, when you turn it over, it says, and it translates to German, but in English it says, For thine has stumbled upon the grave of Waldo. <laughs> you finally found him. For the game is over. And so you're you weeping in joy. No. You're, it, if you it, see the me, game's then it's over. It's, it's, it's like, so you're weeping no more... in sadness. Because the quest The is party's left. over. Yes. And you derive so much joy trying to find Waldo. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why we do it. The real yeah. Waldo were the friends we made. The real the Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yeah, you're, you're, you're pretty close. So this is a stone uh, wow. called Who the Hunger Stones. The Hunger Stones. These are century-old boulders uh, that reappeared last week in Europe as uh, rivers in Europe uh, ran dry due to the ongoing drought conditions uh, uh so, so so we've got what dead bodies outside of las vegas <laughs> boulders with with uh, uh half millennia old warnings on them mm -hmm. uh, uh the drought abundant in gifts <laughs> yeah so in 2013 a czech research team wrote that the boulders are quote chiseled with the years of hardship and the initials of authors lost to history and uh that uh there are uh, 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 they found that before 1900, the following droughts are commemorated on the stone. 1417, which is about 200 years before the stone was made. 1616, about the year that we think the stone had been initially made. 1707, another 100 years later. 1746, about 40 years later. 1790, about 40 years later. 1800, 10 years later. 1811, 11 years later. 1830, 20 years later, it's getting a little closer and closer. Uh, 1842, 1868, 1892, and then 1893. There's an inverse to this that, that we covered on a uh, Modern Rogue um, article where uh, in Japan, there are strange uh, blocks with a bunch of writing on them. And people are like, what's that? Anyway, who knows? Who can know what this means? Let's build a housing development around it. Turns out that what was written was, yo, this is the high mark of a tsunami once. Oops. So probably don't build. <laughs> I was going to say, man, <laughs> building, building on mysterious blocks. That sounds like how you get the ring. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's Japan. Like Japan has got a very, very long history. I mean, this rock is only 500 years old. Yeah. It only meant to talk about a flood maybe about 200 years beforehand. Wait, wait, is it, is it floods or droughts? Or droughts, excuse me. Droughts, droughts. yeah. Right. Well, also, That's it sounds like we've had a lot of droughts that have brought it down to that level, like that, that we were actually in kind of an age of prosperity. In all right, all right. A little, we got a real climate denier over here. <laughs> <laughs> sure, nothing. What I'm saying changing. is that you have you have clear evidence here. <laughs> I'm marked down by the Germanic tribes that... This is not something that is man-made. Uh, this is from uh, so FIT is the thing that I'm still selling from heaven. Dumped. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, a science alert reported on this, but uh, the stones are not the only hidden relic to emerge in European rivers due to drought receding waters due to climate change. In Italy's Po River also revealed a slew of archaeological treasures. A sunken shipwreck of a World War II era barge resurfaced in June after the river, which is the country's largest, reached low levels during its worst drought in 70 years. More recently in July, a drought-stricken Italian river revealed a previously submerged 1,000-pound bomb from World War II. Experts had to safely remove it. Well, like, thank God. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't want experts to have hazardly remove it. <laughs> Like, but, here, here to remove it, the Three Stooges. <laughs> All right, listen up, boys. Yeah. You're going to grab that end. I'm going to grab this end. Oh, I'll... come on, dummy. Walk around the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do. All right, close your eyes. Take three steps. Or... Wow, what? what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, last story here. <laughs> Gentlemen, how funny would it be if the rest of the episode was just an extended <laughs> uh, radio play of the Three Stooges by the three of us? 
Please don't tempt fate. Andrew, Andrew would show up in the middle of it, like just because his spider sense was tingling. <laughs> Gentlemen, I need your help. Actually, when he showed up, he would say, uh, uh, "Do you lose your vim and vigor? You need Geritol." <laughs> Gentlemen, I need your help. Yep. Go. A 911 call has just been placed and disconnected from a zoo, and we need you two, the zoo crew, to investigate and save the day. My name's Doug Zoo. That's my brother Dave Zoo, and we're the zoo crew, and we're going to solve this case. Hey, Isn't that right, Dave? Uh, yeah, that's right. Listen, when somebody calls 911, we show up. We're... Contracted with 911. <laughs> Sometimes they farm it out to us, the yeah. zoo crew. Well, it's we... a cost cutting measure. It was in the Patriot Act. The, the zoo. Zoo crew here. We know. Where, where's my cowbell? We got paid by Donald Rumsfeld. <laughs> <laughs> We're the zoo crew. Uh, all right, so. Look it up. Who knew? Who knew the zoo crew? <laughs> Doug you, and Dave. Where do you start, Doug uh, and Dave? Oh, listen. Wait, what's the problem right. again? <laughs> <laughs> A 911 call had been placed and disconnected from a zoo. I'm, I'm... <laughs> I just did a game because <laughs> you were yelling. God. What is it? They <laughs> made the call to what? A call had been placed to 911 and then disconnected from a zoo. You have to investigate and save the day. Okay. Doug, Dave, zoo crew, okay. going to a zoo. Uh, okay. going to a zoo. Hey, first of all, are we, uh, 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 uh knock, knock, knock. Caca, caca. This is how you get into a zoo. <laughs> all right. Well... <laughs> Wait, is, is, anybody so, is, it, is it after hours? Well, I mean, the door's <laughs> closed. I ain't paying admission. All right. Yeah. yeah. Do an animal sound. Maybe they'll think you're an animal. Let us in. <laughs> I'm a snake. <laughs> a, a, woman, a woman and her son just look at you and then walk into the zoo on their way. They are... <laughs> Non plus. I think you were trying to get noises. into the service entrance. Oh. I think it's open. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, let's walk yeah. on in. All uh, right. Hey, 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 gather around, gather around. Come on, come on, come on, gather around. Officer, gather what's around. wrong? What's wrong, officer? Gather around, uh, officer. All right, all right, I'm 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 Doug Zoo. He's Dave Zoo. We're the Zoo crew. <laughs> okay. There was a call. Are you brothers? Nine one one. It's uh, not unrelated. That'll be revealed in episode five. <laughs> uh, you're gonna assume it up until that point. Look, mm. but the real issue is is that. There was a 911 call placed in it uh, from this zoo, and then it was disconnected. We need to talk to everybody who has access to a phone. Also, we have to answer some questions. Yeah. Where was the call placed? Yep. Okay. When was the call placed? Right. Yep. Cellular or wired? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 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 giraffe. Those are most of the questions. Just giraffe with a question. <laughs> giraffe with a question mark. Yeah. Four questions that we have to ask. Gotcha. So look, I, I need, I need, uh, 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 and also because this is the weird thing podcast, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna ask for any, yeah. any phone that is near any kind of animal exhibit, specifically the monkeys or the snakes. Uh, 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 also uh, spiders. Also, the spiders. Oh, uh, well, answer the questions, ding dong. Uh, well, what, what's your name, by the way? Yeah. I'm Mike, the manager of the zoo. Manager Mike. <laughs> ah, classic. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Let me go talk to the talk to the because uh, I didn't call you. I don't know anything about this. I imagine he takes a take the walkie talkie. Uh, did anybody call the cops? And everyone says no, no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sorry, officer. I don't think any of our employees called you. Uh, okay. Well, uh, uh, I believe you. For now. Would you like to investigate? I mean, if something's yes, going wrong, obviously, I would love for you to look around. We want to investigate and... anywhere that has a phone that can reach the outside world that is near any kind of animal. All right, listen up. I'm going to have you take all the mammals. I'm going to go look at the fish. Hey, it's just a hey, nice Dave. It's just a nicer... Dave. Yeah? Dave. Yeah. What the hell are you doing, man? What's it? Well, I mean, I... What's going on? I'll, fish? That's, fish? It, they got... That doesn't make any... They got jellyfish. Dave, let me ask you a question. Yeah? You use it again? I... <laughs> I mean, wait, uh, Are you using again? Hey, man. Be honest. Hey, look, I just—it's fine. It's just, fine if you're high. It's fine if you're high. I'm trying to. Solve we're gonna. We're gonna get through this. It. Look, we're gonna get through this. We got this gig. I may or may not be your brother or your friend. We <laughs> won't find out until episode five. <laughs> okay. But I. But we're setting up high stakes that we're the zoo crew. We're contracted by nine one one. It was in the Patriot Act. I don't know. All I know is when we came in, there was some pretty looking orchids, and so I may have eaten, uh, eaten, eaten. 
Oh, oh, oh you're so tall. Oh. We're staying together. Okay. And we're and we're investigating whatever this we're manager go see Mike the jelly, says. The jellyfish. Shut up. Jellyfish. <laughs> Just follow my lead. Okay. All right. I'm cool. You're cool. Okay. Uh, hey, this is cool. Manager Mike. Manager yeah. Mike. I've got a development for you. Go. One of my one of my demi managers has told me that some of sometimes the animals uh, get a little get a little uh, handsy with some of the equipment around here. We can uh, ah uh, a we sexual violation. Is your part is your partner okay? <laughs> hey, shut up! We're asking the questions. <laughs> okay. uh, but, but but one of one of, one of, so, so uh, we have enough time in the day for you to both pick an animal to investigate and accuse of being the caller. Okay, listen, I got this. I'm just gonna don't go say look jellyfish. At, I, I swear I to God, if you say a, jellyfish, real quick, because uh, 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 they're I wise. Gone. They're okay. Okay, I'll talk. Be to serious. Snake. I'll talk to the snake. Justin, who do you talk to? Or Dave? Or Doug? Whichever. <laughs> I'm Doug. Doug, sorry. He's Dave. Dave. We're contracted by 911 Emergency Services. I was accused it was in of the being Patriot high Patriot Act. and yeah. pigeonholed into yes and that I was, ate an yeah, orchid that is the way that, psychedelic. That's the way that, that, that improv works. I are, yep. you, we find that out in episode four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to go see the monkeys. Okay. See you later, well, you, partner. You, Bye. I begin to walk towards the aquarium. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I so, comically, I walk the other way, and then I comically walk, I run back into frame and turn you toward the snakes. And then I continue to walk towards the snakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, Dave goes to the snake house yeah. and is looking around <laughs> and is talking to one of the employees and... Uh, what would uh, uh, do you have any questions for yeah, the snakes? Yeah, yeah, I got a question. So, do you, do they make their own little maracas, or do you hand them out? No, it's the uh, the tail. It's uh, the rat. It's part of their body. It's uh, yeah, yeah. It's a part of the. It's just a part of them. But but they got they got like what uh, 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 two types, right? Hot ones. Uh, hot ones. That's right. That's our favorite YouTube series. And Mr. Beast is our other one. <laughs> yeah. And well, well so, just point me to the snake I should talk to. Well, you, it, we're here. Here you are. I mean, it's uh, it's a uh, uh, you know it's a uh, little snake house here. But I don't think anyone any of the snakes get. I mean, it, it, the snakes can't get out. Well, I don't. We, I'll uh, be the uh, judge of that. Okay. Uh, what do you do? I open up a cage and let a snake out. Okay, well, <laughs> the employee is trying to say, "Sir, sir, please, this is a this is a proper snake house. We've never opened I'm these cages." I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's a little onanism. I spilled my snake on the floor. Oh, is that a biblical reference? Yeah, I got that. I'm sorry, this guy. I'm this a god fearing employee of the zoo. <laughs> All right, cut listen. to Doug. At the uh, oh, you you got into a little golf cart with uh, an employee. Oh. And you're going to the monkey house. All right, so I'm at, I'm at the monkey house, and I'm uh, uh, testing the the uh, glass uh, uh, mm. uh, by by applying increasing force. Uh, uh, first, just a little wrap of my knuckle, and then and then eventually, it's me punching the glass <laughs> as hard as I can. <laughs> uh, and then I go like, oh. oh. Strong glass. Yeah, you hurt it. You're hurting. You're hurting your hand because it's like it's actually plastic and yeah, very. You know, animals are designed. To... Uh, uh, so after all that, which takes roughly twelve minutes, I look to minutes. the nearest uh, <laughs> person and I say, "Any monkeys get out? Use the phone, you think?" <laughs> oh yeah, you know we got this little we got this little this little screwball over here. Where's that? Where is it? And you look back at the golf cart and it's you see David Blaine. a capuchin monkey <gasps> is holding a. Work cell phone in the golf cart. Uh, uh, I immediately get on my phone and I go, uh, 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 excuse me, I I'm going to need my brother, <laughs> <laughs> Doug, back here at the monkey house. Uh, uh, he's at the snake uh, house. What? Okay. He's not at the snake house? <gasps> Check the aquarium. <laughs> uh, and, then I, and then I hang up and I wait, I wait for, 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 for Doug to show up. I come back. I say, you will not believe what I just saw. What'd you see? Uh, with a flare, I take the boa constrictor that I'm wearing around my neck. Oh, my and goodness. Fluff it, uh, throw it over. And I say, uh, that jellyfish is so cool. <laughs> I, I hold a look at the ridiculousness that is my partner, right. uh, uh, Doug. 
and then I look back toward the capuchin monkey and and I and I say uh somebody got to get that monkey and check what what the what the history of that cell phone is and you check the cell is a, they get the monkey and there's a, it's kind of a whole uh Benny Hill sort of yeah. vibe for a few minutes they're getting the monkey hey <laughs> there's ah, a lady so there, a lady like, in a bikini yeah, is right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they pull out the phone, and indeed, in the call history, nine one one. You guys solved the case. Wait, I'm... hold on. Oh, <laughs> let's let's find out why he was calling. <laughs> Beep boop boop. Nine one one. How can I help you? Uh, hey. What's your problem? State your emergency. Well, uh, did, well where where are you located? Uh, we're at the zoo. Which okay. Uh, what, what's, what's ever, the problem? You ever been to the jellyfish <laughs> exhibit? Is your mommy or daddy on the line? Uh, can you well, can your mommy or daddy this, answer the phone? Uh, Hi. Hi. This is nine one one. Is uh is your child aware of what they what they just did? Uh, look, this is uh this is Doug Zoo. <laughs> uh, we were contracted by the government. Oh, this, oh Zoo. Yeah. Oh, hey, uh -huh. how's it going? Yeah, Zoo? We, yeah, we were we were the Zoo crew. Oh, was that yeah. Dave? Hey man, yeah, oh. that was Dave. Yeah, oh. he's hey, using yeah. again. He yeah. Should, uh, yeah, I wondered why he didn't give me the password to let me know. No, that you it's could fine. Get through the yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're we're, we're the zoo crew. What are you up so, to? How's I it just want to let you know we solved the monkey case. Oh, good, good. What was yeah. it? It was a monkey. monkey. Oh, yeah, oh, hey. You don't name the case after. Like, no, but we'd already named like, the case afterwards, the, the, so I'm sorry. I'm catching, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm catching OJ you up. Yeah, I'm catching you. slicing the throat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly. Anyway. Sorry. All right, well, bring it on in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just bring it on. Bring it Audio back home. Audio hug. Audio. Um, XOXO. Mm, do it. Come on, Dave. Mm. Um, no, audio sorry, hug. Sorry, I, audio I, hug. I, I, I just so three, up. two, oh, one. Um, um, I love you, Bowie. Mm. All right, bye, nine one one. There we go. End Boop. scene. There we go. Yes. Uh, so that really happened in San Luis Obispo, California. <laughs> All of that. All of that. All of that. An actual happened. documentary. Uh, apparently, on check the Patriot Act. <laughs> apparently, on uh, uh, on one fateful Saturday night, uh, a a monkey. A, call, a monkey grabbed a cell phone that was in a golf cart used to move around the property. And uh, my guess is it did the, the uh, you know, on the iPhones, if you click the button enough times, it does an emergency call. I think it probably just did that. How, how many times have I don't you think it accidentally found the dialer. called 911 on your phone? Uh, successfully, uh, un I, I was unsuccessfully <laughs> able to stop 911 from answering once. And then hmm. I hung up on them and then I was like, oh, I got to call them back, don't I? And so I was like, hey. Yeah. That's uh -huh. an embarrassing moment. Um, weirdly, uh, when I have called 911 in an actual emergency, uh, only after the fact did I realize that my phone was locked. Hmm. And while it was locked, I just punched in 911 and it just skipped the the opening of the phone and all that oh, stuff. Oh, really? And just suddenly it was calling nine one one. Really? On the on the code? Uh, uh, this would have been a Nokia mid aughts phone. Oh, oh okay. But yeah, I was yeah. like, your you, iPhone is doing that. You had to do a four digit code that you would yeah. set oh, wow. to, to lock it. Um, uh, but nowadays, all you got to do is just you know put a death grip on your phone and if you, if you press you the like, power it, button it, five it, times, it happens in my pocket a lot. And by a lot, how many I mean, times have you spoken to the dispatch? Only once. Yeah. Uh, only oh, once. Wow. I got I got a call and I saw like it was like buzzing on my phone or on my oh, watch oh, rather wow. that I was like calling nine one one and they were like nine one one what's your emergency and I'm like ah <laughs> I don't there's no emergency the emergency is I'm talking to you they love hearing that in that tone of voice yeah I'm I, everything is fine here Everything's officer great. no I'm a little startled uh, op <laughs> officer you're or not an officer no. dispatcher I think, I think one time. I woke up to the sound of what uh, I only heard one of the whoops, but just with all of my being, I knew it was the second of three. <laughs> yeah. Like I leaned on my phone wrong and all of a sudden it was like the first whoop, whoop and, whoop, and then yeah. I came out and, you can, like, whoop, and I was like, yeah, bop, 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 bop. In, in the settings on the iPhone, you can change it so that, uh, it doesn't immediately call nine one one when you do that five click thing. Cause the five, the five click thing is helpful for, uh, both a as an emergency contact and calling nine one one, but also it locks 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 your phone. Yeah, and that's the like secret way to say like, hey, I need to. I might not know where this phone is going. I need to disable Face ID or biometrics until I give it my passcode. So, Ooh, kick, 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 kick. because I think the way I accidentally trigger it is by holding both both sides, the power button and one of the volume buttons. Because yeah, the the emergency. Yeah, I, I think there are a couple ways to do it now. Yeah. Uh, 
Which one? Which one do you think the monkey did? I think the monkey monkey clicked it. I bet it clicked, clicked it, it five times. I don't know. The grip seems pretty monkey like. Yeah. Uh, the office's post on Facebook. Monkey don't know no better. Said we're told capuchin monkeys are very inquisitive and will grab anything and everything oh. and just start pushing buttons. Well, that explains it. He thought he was calling four one one. Yeah, he was trying to. <laughs> he, he was, was trying lo- to get the four one one. He wanted to see before he digs. He yeah. wanted. He wanted to see what Chinese restaurants are open, and you know, there's only one place he to was, do it. You find was, out on four one one. Monkeys ain't got no internet. Hey, remember when doxing was a service that you could buy from the phone company? <laughs> you could just call if y'all like. Yeah. Hey, where, where does this person live? Susan's number. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they'd be like, right here. Yeah, can't you still do that? I mean, I have yeah. Bryce Castillo's cell phone, but... cell phone number is five one two. Oh, that <laughs> sounds suspiciously like an invitation that no. we we don't want. Uh, it's not a five one two. So uh, those are my <laughs> stories uh, for this week. You guys want to do some picks? Yeah, Let's pick it up. Uh, what's been What's been going on? What you guys? I got a I got a pick for you. What are you gonna pick in? You want to see what winning at art looks like? What? Sure. Then I encourage you I like to go to Paramount Plus mm. and watch the concert film South Park's 25th anniversary concert. Wow. Oh, uh, I've heard that that's Red like Rocks. awesome. It's fantastic. It is Primus, Ween, and wow. Matt Stone and Trey Parker. Uh, uh, there is a special guest band that I don't even want to spoil because it is played as a surprise, uh, even for Matt Stone. But if you want to, I mean, number one, South Park in and of itself is just such a phenomenon uh, uh, of of success. But to do the kind of stuff that they have done for as long as they've done it, to remain as uh, uh, strong as they've done, and they and do as stuff, relevant, they do stuff as far back as Cannibal the Musical. And if you are a Matt Stone and Trey Parker fan, that is the earliest thing for which they did. They, they sing songs from that uh, uh, all throughout South Park's history. Uh, the the gay fish song, the Kanye gay fish song. Uh, the <laughs> got to do the chocolate salty balls. I'm sure. Well, the, no, the chef. There was there was a person for which uh, sang that that yeah. is both no longer with us and was and, not with them by the time that he yeah, was no, no longer they, with they, us. They did not have a friendly split. Uh, but no, what would Brian Boitano do? Uh, uh, the whole movie, the whole F- first yeah, movie, I guess. Yeah, blame Canada. They do. Um, uh, uh, Uncle. Effort, yep. Oh, sure. Uh, and then a very theatrical performance of uh, uh, Lemmy Winks. Oh, oh Lemmy Winks, great. Lemmy Winks, uh, yes. including including the voice of Mister Slave, <laughs> 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 only who only has comes out in a full uh uh uh, uh, uh like a, a three tenor style suit uh, with. His book of of lyrics in front of him, so he can repeat. Jesus. Just, just repeat. The, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, but it is it is truly what what I would encourage everybody to watch it for is uh, just the gratitude on the faces of Matt Stone and Trey Parker. It is like very very wholesome throughout the the, the majority of it. They they love 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 being in that situation so much and uh uh it, it was you know if there's a lot of discouragement that you can get if you're creative for a living when you are measuring your success against other people and wondering where you are in your own schedule versus where you thought you'd be but boy is it good to see somebody just in the winner circle and having 12,000 people at Red Rocks one of the most iconic music venues in America uh, uh, that happens to be in Colorado doing a show. Their hometown boys from Colorado yeah. doing this this thing about their artistic success, and everybody is hanging on every word. This crowd is electric. Uh, it it was just amazing to see. Go go ahead and check it out. South Park, the twenty fifth twenty fifth anniversary concert. Nice. I can't wait to the fiftieth. Wow. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh yo, Disney Plus. Disney Plus. They got this Marvel machine cranking out a lot of mostly garbage. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Then you got one of my all-time favorite comic books from when I was a teenager, the sensational She-Hulk, me, on the edge, sidelines. What's it going to be? Is this Mm going to be a Moon moon Knight, or is this going to be a a WandaVision? Did you not like Moon Knight? Uh, No, I did not. 
We only got to the first episode, but we liked the first episode. Um. Yeah. Yeah. She Hulk. She Hulk. She Hulk. Attorney at law. Fantastic. Uh, I have to imagine it's not an accident that it premieres immediately after Better Call Saul ends. It uh, uh, begins. It's. I would. I would say it was an accident. I say that it's completely coincidental, given yeah. that there was only one week overlap. Uh, uh, well, specifically though, the uh, uh, like they they lean heavily into there's there's some Ally McBeal vibes. Very there, Ally McBeal, right? Yes. And uh, they do the fourth wall breaking, and uh, there's this very uh, intentional like, hey. It's going to be a quirky lawyer comedy. You're going to love it. And then, uh, and of course, it becomes, you know, uh, uh, superhero Martin. origin story. Yes. Yeah. But, but boy, they waste no time. They, they pack in like, yeah, 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 this is cool. That's cool. That's cool. And uh, because Wait, this, it's irreverent. Uh, I will disagree that they don't waste any time, given that the first episode is like set up. <laughs> The first episode, they stopped the show to say, hey, I'm going to expedition dump for... for or oh, ex- no, no, no. Expedition it, it, dump. No, what they give you is a <laughs> movie's worth of, 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 of origin story in 30 minutes, during which they manage to be irreverent and argue about whether or not Captain America... Uh, is a virgin. Is a virgin, and... Uh, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm a sucker for smart Hulk, uh, and uh, I loved it. I loved everything about it. I, I thought it was great. A lot of Ruffalo, oh, like even more than than Endgame, like a lot of like like Ruffalo pouty face, uh, 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 Smart Hulk, which I think is fun. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, uh, I I I liked it too. The only thing that I would say is that the, and maybe it's because I'm watching that and Harley Quinn at the same time, but but the genre of meta female driven badass uh, uh comedy specifically is is something that i i i think is very popular right now i'm very glad that these shows are being made but much like very popular uh, uh beloved like action movies you can kind of see the tropes you can kind of see the the character motivations like no matter whether it was arnold schwarzenegger or, or sylvester stallone you kind of know that these characters are probably going to make the you, same you, decisions, you, you and they're going to stick feel into that the same moment before the clever catchphrase is coming. Exactly. And, yeah. 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 And 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 I I do think that that you know, no fault of these shows specifically, but uh, uh, there there is a bit of a a tropey element to to this rise in television. But that being said, uh, I enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to it getting into its groove as more of the lawyer comedy. Uh, uh, outside of the the obligation to explain yeah. why this lady became a Hulk. Yeah, I'm ready for that. Yeah, I'm ready for like. I I, I, I would have liked if they would have done because they they done it with with some of the other uh, Disney Plus shows where it's like give me two episodes on the on on the initial rollout because yeah. I would have liked to have seen where they went. It makes me think that they think that they've got a good show and yes. that they don't want to. Uh, just dump it out versus other shows where maybe having multiple episodes saves the day. Uh, uh, there's, oh, by the way, surprise appearance from uh, uh, Jamila Jamil, uh, who, was, who was just great, just showed up and kicking ass, a big fan of The Good Place. Um, I, I hear a lot of boohooing about the CGI on She-Hulk, but I'm like, it's a, it's a TV, it's a TV level CGI kind of work. It's a little Shrek-ish. Yeah? It is a little Shrek-ish. Shrek-esque. Yeah. Isn't Shrek a movie that was lauded for its animation? Yeah, it was a fully animated movie and not a animated with real life stuff. Yeah. Shrek so was there, always going to be green. more of a yeah, there was more of a, a an onus in a world where you're supposed to believe this green person exists in our world as yeah. opposed to especially, just I, I guess especially I just next hold... to Mark Ruffalo's green looking way better. Like hers is fine, but his looks really good because it's all movie assets. You want to know what exactly. though? Also, because they just had all that stuff laying around. <laughs> also, I do wonder if we're gonna get into the gender of it all, whether or not like Hulk's face can look very textured and grizzled and grizzled because he's a boy. Yep. Well, and, Whereas, and also, like, also I feel like, like She Hulk needs like, to be uh, smart, a little smoother. Smart Hulk uh, on some of the close-ups, you could see when he's got a little bit of scruff on his face. Uh, there's gray in there. It's like he's he's being portrayed as early fifties. Yeah. Uh-huh. In, in a way that because that, that's the way where anybody who has gray on their face. 
I, I mean, early fifties. Well, no, he it's, he talks specifically thing. about how he's been on a fifteen year journey, uh -huh. and he has the syllabus. And yet, look, I can do the math. Uh, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> all right. He's uh, saying, cut, uh, cut me, cut my beard open and I count got, the gray I rings. Got like three grays. Get I know what here. it's like Blonde to be you. Oh wow! So Get you're like uh, early fifties, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Early 50s looks like. <laughs> oh, I got a pick. Yeah. Um, I the, This finale, this just uh, finished up uh, this past week, mm -hmm. and I think it's very interesting, and it's definitely not for everybody, but I am just enamored with the HBO series, uh, The Rehearsal with Nathan Fielder. Um, this, is, this is really strange, um, because Nathan Fielder, who does a lot of this kind of awkward sort of setup um type of comedy and 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 i don't know projects um he is riding the line on this show in terms of sincerity you know the idea is hey wouldn't your wouldn't difficult things in life be easier if you could just rehearse them and what if we spent an ungodly amount of money to be able to do that so like the first conflict is about uh, uh about a trivia team and one guy wanting to confess that he doesn't have a master's degree to the rest of his team. And so they build an exact, an exact replica of that bar on us in a studio exterior interior, huge, perfect. And, and you're, you're like a hundred percent certain they're not just booking that venue on an off night or something. No, you see it in the big warehouse studio okay. that they've built it in. Um, because later they transport it to the other side of the country. Um, uh, all for this rehearse, you know, to rehearse this. And it, it breaks down a lot of, it breaks down that concept a lot of what does it mean to rehearse? What does it mean to rehearse difficult moments? And, uh, what does it mean if a rehearsal is, how, how does, how do you have a, a simulation of a, of a real event where you have an animus that is so close enough to reality that it is a valid rehearsal. Yeah. You know? Can you can your rehearsal be can your simulation be so perfect that you actually end up creating text in the the facsimile? Um it's it is cool. It scared me in times. Uh it has got a lot to say about unscripted and 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 um you know these kind of unwitting volunteer sort of things uh it's it's really something to try uh, and, and picked up for season two as well that's right um and it's an easy watch there's six half hour episodes like oh wow yeah uh it's, so it's really say, dense. it seems like it went through quick it did um they also think they, they put it out on fridays um and it was a max original it wasn't a wasn't it is hbo, HBO. it is hbo Oh really? Because it says Max on the thing. Yeah, it says uh, HBO original, because oh, they they make a point of saying uh, Max actually, original. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I I I think give the first episode a try, and if you're like, how far can you take this? He will take it as he oh, will he take is, it. He is he down is the road. The, uh, 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 you know, in in the vein of like. Larry David or Ricky Gervais in terms of how much they want to delve into the awkward and then take that desire and, and feed it to Andy Kaufman. Like that is, that is Nathan Fielder's realm. I mean, he, he really like, is carving out a, a, an extraordinarily uh, specific niche for himself. And also I'm just in shock at, at the budget <laughs> that they had for this in one episode he opens uh an acting school and he teaches a class on acting um and then he is so unsure about how it went that to kind of reflect on it he hires actors to play the people who were in the class that they filmed uh so that he could uh relive the class from the student's perspective with a fake a uh, fake nathan and all the other actors the the levels it's 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 really really good uh the rehearsal on hbo boom anything else guys anything we uh we made it feel like we got here? it all 
Yeah. We got uh, Odin. Uh, we the, got the, the monkey. The, the only <laughs> other thing I want to recommend. Oh, yeah. What you got? Uh, yeah. The, the Vought Industries YouTube channel continues to delight. Uh, they, they, they got, it's been like a month since the last episode of The Boys came out. I know. They're still releasing stuff. Are they? They, they, they released this collection of Deep Thoughts with the Deep. <laughs> That's just amazing. Uh, it's like a, a minute long. Uh, give, give it a look. Okay. Yeah. Find, find that. Uh, I did see memes that. of that. On Reddit, so so I guess it has uh, uh, it has cachet. Yeah, like a couple of them were as good as the old Jack Handy ones from SNL. These are what are they? Are uh, they uh, cartoons? Or, uh, are, well, uh, Vought, I, yeah, Vought Indus Internationals, I think, is what it is. But the okay. uh, this is allegedly a collection of deep thoughts from the deep uh, to promote his book, uh, uh, Deep Waters. And uh, there, it, it, we'll, we'll listen Can to Can we a see one? Yeah. Let's see one. They're pretty good. <laughs> Being attractive is its own sort of prison. What if we stopped offering thoughts and prayers and instead offered prayers and thoughts? For many years, we've watched TV. But now, the TV watches us. You have my permission. To love. Deep thoughts with the deep. Huh. They, they get much better from there. All right. Well, uh, we, 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 we will out. leave yeah. that we for you guys to enjoy notes. in your own home anytime you want. That's right. All right, guys. Well, for uh, for all of us here at the Weird Things Podcast, it's been weird. Hey, look at that. Bing a ding a ling a bing a bing bong. Uh, All right, we're gonna take a, -a yeah. I do have to go to the bathroom, but break. I just realized I think I have a three o'clock call. So well, well you better short. You better go quick. Short. You keep, better keep go. Keep it in the quick. shorts. Okay. Keep it in the shorts. Uh, we're gonna keep it short and get back to after things in just we're a minute. Keep everybody. it in the shorts. Hey, Justin, how are you doing? Hey, what up, dude? Uh, how is what the up, travel? Brother, I, I, you had you had. No, you like, didn't have as many travel issues getting back, I'm, right? I've been everywhere, man. You no, no, yeah, it was fine. It was fine getting back. Uh, hop, skip, and a jump from Cheyenne to Denver. Uh, and then Denver down here to Austin. Not a bad flight. It's like an hour and change. So, uh, no, it was, it was good. And then uh, took care of some stuff. Had uh, the old pal John Teasdale in. Ooh, John. Yeah. And then... Um, yeah. Yeah. Rock and rolling, getting back into the uh, swing of things until we have some uh, some top secret travel Ooh. at the end of the month. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Top secret. Top secret. Top secret. We're doing Operation Labor Day. Oh, yeah. Labor Day. <laughs> Labor Day secret. It's, you're keeping secrets on Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> how was uh, by the way yeah uh ken from chicago were asking how was the uh, how was it on c-span i saw a lot oh, of, it was amazing got a lot of engagement it was great here yeah no it was it was great it was great to see everybody react to it and and thank you so much for anybody who was watching uh my mom yelled at me because i didn't tell her i was going to be on c-span oh uh she's like what am i nice and i'm like well I don't know, man. I tell a lot of people a lot of things. Like, I can't remember everybody. Um, uh, why don't you listen to my, well, my I mean, podcast? No, but she's like, fuck. You know, like, 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 you know, like, you know how much I've had to listen to you already? Like, I had to listen to you for years, for oh, decades. Boy. Like, she's done. She, now her watch has ended in terms of listening to <laughs> the nonsense coming out of my mouth. Anyway, no, it was it was amazing. Shout out to everybody at C-SPAN. It was super fun. Oh, uh, and, uh, uh. The, the people could not be could not have been more professional. And let me say this: I was honored, Except honored to be a part of, of C-SPAN. I love the callers. <laughs> the callers were great. Like, I mean, if anything, it's like living a life on the internet uh, uh, trained me better than anything. Because, like, I, I got the sense that C-SPAN has this little this relationship with like guests and callers, where they're like, if you don't know the kind of people that call into C-SPAN, right. then you might be put off. But I was like, let's go, baby. Like, come on. I need every, I, I was born for that. Yeah, no, and, and it showed. It was it was, it was was like you had spent uh, 15 years in the most brutal simulator training montage, and it was finally game time. Uh, yeah. It was great. I mean, because these guys, they don't know. They're locked in here with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm being sent this Photoshop of you with a... <laughs> The Mickey Mouse Yamaka. Oh yeah, no, because oh, I the have, clocks. Because the clocks, yeah. the clocks are there. 
got some big Minnie Mouse ears on this Nobody box. commented on the clock. Or or um, uh, the fact that I left a paper towel roll uh, to my left. <laughs> Which you can see just kind of peeking out. You kind of look like you're coming from a campaign. You're reporting from a campaign office. That's the goal. I built a, a, a whole set in my house, so it looks like that. Uh, uh, it's working, buddy. But, yeah. It's yeah. working, buddy. That's All right. It. All right. Uh, so you, you, you got to be out by three? Yep. Right? Let's go. Let's start the After Things program. In... Three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined as always with Brian Brushwood. Hello. And Justin Robert Young. What up? We are here talking about being creative professionals online. We got an email from uh, one of our good friends, uh, Mr. Joe Diamond, uh, who asked for a little bit of advice. Joe writes, I asked Brian uh, if he thought I should send this along. I've been doing more corporate work lately, and I finally put together an electronic press kit. I would love to hear his feedback on the podcast. And since you guys give such practical advice for the shows and the website, thank you for all you do. Can't wait to be back at HQ and stay spooky. Joe Diamond. So we've got his Joe Di- his uh, EP- his EPK, his electronic, electronic press kit. And, press and, kit. and, and yeah. for the uninitiated, the uh, Joe, Joe is one of our longest uh, pet projects. He, yes. he, he, for good or for ill, actually listens to our advice. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I think he's uh, healthily selective about what he institutes. But um, uh, it's been amazing to watch his career ascend. And so this is his EPK electronic press kit um, so this is, for corporate work. Uh, uh, well, well, let's take a look here. So this is about a six page PDF here. Corporate theater education, it says on the front cover so this page. This is all, profile, all encompassing. If you would like a magician by the name of Joe Diamond, then this is what you're Yeah, if you're at. pitching yeah. a TV show, this would, uh, they'd say. Well, here, let, 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 let's, let, let's real quick narrate. Uh, uh, from from the top here, yeah, page cover co- yeah, cover page is a great uh, black and white headshot of of Joe Diamond. He's got a little bit of a floopy doop uh, uh, hair, but he looks great. He looks That's irreverent. M- most importantly, he does not look like a mentalist. <laughs> by by which I mean he leans into none of the spooky tropes. That so all right, if you were if you were trying to do a mentalist thing, what would what would be the tropes? Oh, there would be a skull that was glowing in your hands. Yep. would be over it. You uh, would also have hands, up light. hands, oh, uh, like, a hand like, like to your, your head. Oh, you're right. just touching the temples, like like. It starts with a. Would you say that the 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 chisel? The version of like the Carter poster of like the devil whispering in your ear that's been like reproduced a billion times would that be would that be a trope or is that more magician? Yeah, uh, no, 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 that's definitely a trope, and I think, um, man, that one, that one is, uh, it, it goes through waves in my perception of being hacky or classic. Yeah. you know, depending on how popular it is right this minute. Um, uh, I feel like it's been burnt. By at this point, uh, sure, like, uh, unless you've never, uh, I, I don't know how many people are using it right now, but 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 this one, um, it it uh, when I glance at it, I, I could instantly think corporate speaker, yeah, uh, uh, he's got uh, uh, his face half in shadow, which conveys uh, 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 uh just enough sense of mystery mm-hmm. or or danger or conflict. Uh, his logo is very eye catching, uh, uh, you cannot help but see. Eyes, half a smile, and the words Joe Diamond immediately. And he looks and confident, yes. which is another thing that is to get booked, especially for corporate stuff. You need to be confident because a lot of places that book corporate stuff are salespeople and very confident at uh, people. So you, yeah, you need- also, and I don't know if this is an illusion only I'm seeing, but it looks like he's leaning in just a little bit, like he's got a secret mm-hmm. to, to share with mm-hmm. you. Yeah, he's got a good he's got a good photo here. I, I think uh, the big thing I would say is uh, the first thing that I was drawn to after the photo were the big words corporate theater education. And I thought initially, oh, you do corporate theater education? That's a, a very specific niche when it took me a minute to realize, oh, he meant uh, corporate gigs, theater gigs, education gigs. So maybe like a line in between each of them to kind of designate them. Or as yeah, maybe things. a little more spacing because there's yeah. kind of some empty space here. Or, um, or, or above it, maybe putting a, a presentations for corporate theater education. Maybe because yeah, I look even, at because I look at the even first just, even just dots, like even just bullets. Sure, that yeah, would, that would probably differentiate it. Because the one thing I don't exactly love about this cover page is that the thing that Joe does 
is these two tiny words down here. Mind reader. Mind reader. Everything else is like business. Like, here's what he looks like. Here's the website. Here's the type of things he does. Here's his name. Here's his logo. What does he do? He's a mind reader. So maybe. So it, I, it, I don't need. He does, and he doesn't need to be doing woo, 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 to, to, to uh, really sell it. But I think uh, this is this is I think this is a cover for a, a press kit for someone who already knows who Joe is. And so I, I think that would be how I would change this. Because even even if you put mind reader going up the side, it would look irreverent and the website would probably be in the same font down below his name. Yeah. Uh, and you can make mind reader a little bit bigger or just or or yeah. if you wanted to put words above that corporate theater education you could say instead of uh, America's greatest mind reader it just says Joe Diamond Live and then take that context and put it above mind reading for corporate theater education yeah something something like that so so that would be a I guess uh, my there we go. Change on that. We're ripping it apart. Uh, Next. Page oh, we're, two. We're really letting them have it. Page two, a couple full color pictures here. I don't, uh, this bottom picture needs to be white balanced, and I don't love this top picture on the right, to be honest. I, uh, feel I don't like, love it in color. I feel like, you know, we didn't have a smile in the cover, which is fine because you're a mind reader and you don't always need to be smiling. But I, I, I do feel like in one of these two photos, there's got to be. Some kind of fun that is being had, uh, 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 some kind of smile, some kind of like charisma shot. Well, because this, well, this is this is a very bemused shot is the lead image, and then here he's having fun with somebody, but we don't know if if the guy's having fun. The guy's not laughing. Kinda, yeah, kind of looks annoyed. He kind of like, hey, hey, give me a break. Uh, he's got his hand, his palms up. Yeah. Consider the possibility that on page two. We've now seen, we have no question who Joe Diamond is. Yeah. Uh, if on page two, that full swipe down the side, imagine it is a close-up of a attractive woman laughing. Yes. And clapping. Like, Joe Diamond is this person. What does he do? Causes the audience Makes to Makes attractive act like women this. laugh. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. Do you or someone you know have an attractive <laughs> woman who would like to laugh? Yeah. Called mm -hmm. Joe Diamond. Because I, I like I like. I, I like having crowd shots. I think that that really helps sell, you know, I mean, and, and we're, we're, you know, there's, there's a bunch of text on here that is, is probably fine. Um, I, but. I will say this. I know that a lot of performers have, uh, uh, anxiety about them looking earnest, mm -hmm. especially in the world, in, in the realm of magic. I would encourage anybody, including Joe to lean into it. Like, you are a charismatic person. You make your living entertaining people. Showcase that in a way that is up on Front Street. Yeah. Uh, page three, TV appearances. Got some nice big, nice big Netflix Showtime Today logo, which I think is really smart. Yep. I think that should be on page one, to be honest, or uh, page two. Um, uh, let's see. Joe Diamond performs his interactive mind reading show with humor, kindness, and charm. He involves the entire audience throughout the show, both on stage and from their seats. The show is geared towards intelligent grown-up audiences, but comedy is kept clean. And then what happens? Laughing, gasping, applauding, whispering, thank yous, and remembering the event years from now. So kind of a like a bit of like this is what is in the show, and also this uh, kind of sounds like a run of show almost. Uh, yes, also a, a very excellent shot of, of him on the same side uh, as a volunteer mm -hmm. who is clearly am amazed by something. Yeah, I would, yeah. I, I think that's probably the best image of the EPK so far. Uh, I would I would think about having it more prominent. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe earlier. Because, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's real solid. It, it, and then it, the, the top one is good here, too, where you've got the logos. And, uh, and it's the first time we've seen him smile it, it is the barest of smiles, but it is it oh, is yeah. at the very least a smirk, and and I do think that that especially knowing Joe's act and knowing that Joe is not he's he's not Max Maven, he Correct. is not somebody that's that's either dour or spooky or anything like he's that. Self deprecating, he's self deprecating. He's a funny guy. He's a charming guy. I think that that leading with that, he's not going to lose anything by smiling a little bit. Yeah. Hey, why don't you smile more? You'd be so much more pretty. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I just want to double down on, on that comment of like, I don't think I ever see a shot of a magician 
you know, it's almost always it's the magician versus the audience. But instead, that positioning of him on the same side, yeah. sharing a moment, it's uh, I it's like an that amazing photo. That's yeah, a great very... photo. It, it really is, and, uh, and and the color pops so yeah. much. Uh, page four, client review. So we've got some quotes here. Uh, these names are clickable links to uh, just brief YouTube um, uh, quotes, testimonials uh, that that Joe got from these folks. Um, Here's the only thing that I would say is that I don't know who these names are. Right. Or the logos or the companies. But I would like necessary. to have the companies listed. I would rather the company be the thing listed and not the person mm. uh, because at the very least, if it's like, I, I don't know what MSBC is, this is the top company, yeah. but if it was like, a, 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 I don't know, a builder MSBC construction or something like that, I'd be like, Oh, that should be he, the clickable he, he, link. He, he, yeah. The he, photo. He, did, he did a thing for a, a construction company. That's uh, cool. And if possible, the photo should be the person who's saying the words, possibly with the words in the photo. Sure. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah. just to prove I or mean, one word of it. Because, like, uh, uh, no offense, but these are not Netflix Showtime and the Today Show as far as logos go. And, and really, they're great. They look real, but they look, they're not, uh, and, and no also, one knows them. I would say, you know, when I was in corporate, entertainment uh people cared about the industry so it's like if you're gonna sell a event to google they want to know if you did four shows at facebook if you're gonna sell it to uh, kpmg they want to know if you've done stuff for price waterhouse cooper like if you're gonna do it for mckinsey they want to know if you did it for a consulting firm so it's like uh, almost more valuable than the company's or specifically, the names nobody gives a rat's ass about. Like, nobody cares who booked the gig, except for you. You should care very, very much, and you should send them <laughs> gifts. Uh, but in terms of getting new people, you could just say education, construction, accounting. Oh, yeah. Because then— The type of client that you are— The type of business that yeah. you are working for, because at that point, that's what's going to attract them. Because if they got to go back to somebody else to, to, to okay your price— right. They're gonna be like, oh, they they've been he he's done stuff for these companies before. Because these are these are good quotes. Here, I'm gonna read you one. You tell me which company this is from. Joe Diamond is an evil genius. He mesmerized my 250 employees for the second year in a row at our Christmas party. He is a must see. That is a very glowing compliment. And which type of show? I don't know what. Vought I, International. It's Vought International. <laughs> so deeper and deeper. So think 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 about those. Um, page five is. Uh, a contact uh, sheet, uh, phone, email, website. I would say you've made clickable links. They should these should all be clickable, just like a bunch of your other elements are. Yeah. Um, with phone, mail to link, URL link, link to Instagram. Um, I don't love this photo. I also, yeah. I mean, look, I, I ain't a. It looks good and it doesn't fit. I ain't Doug designer here. Uh, but I would almost. You're Dave uh, Designer. I'm Dave the designer, designer, brothers. Yeah. Design brothers. <laughs> uh, uh, I would almost still want to put Joe as the dominant image up top. So if you're going to uh, uh, do it back out and then have get in touch below it, because yeah. no matter what, you're selling you. Uh, and uh, if you're scroll, I mean, look look at how I'm scrolling it here. I first see Let's Chat, Get in Touch. I see a long list of text. And then I By see the way, Joe. All of these are intermediary steps that uh, that are between you, Joe, and what both of you want together, which is a standing ovation. Like, 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 it would be simpler to have an awesome reaction shot and and just have it say, "Let's get started." Go here to begin. Also, here, go back to that image. Let's chat and get in touch. Don't mean anything. Correct. If you Ready? say and book, then book <laughs> now, dates filling for the, the the slate that you're selling, dates booking for 2022, 2022 23. Yeah. Like, like having that. more framing there because it's like, let's chat, get in touch, and talk about what? This fishing? Uh, to, this, is, this is very much like a PowerPoint looking. Like, I think you probably had a good template, and I can see the template in this one. Uh, because not only do you have get in touch and let's chat, you also got ready to talk in the super text in the top and keep scrolling for more on the right side, which I think indicates that you know that this is that you've got a gap here on 
the scrolling of these pages before you get to a good visual moment again. To uh, to be honest, uh, everything on this page I think could go and and be replaced with one simple call to action, which is check the calendar now. Find out if yeah. you can book. Now all of a sudden, just a little bit of fear. We have a promise of of an amazing Scarcity. show, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's like, oh shoot, yeah, no, I have a job now, and I, and I, and I might be too late. I think it's. I would say the 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 counter to that is, I think it's good to have multiple ways to get in touch listed at once, because if this is, I mean, if this is what he's showing to get people, you know, booked, maybe some people will go to the website. Maybe some people just need to call him right now. Well, and, maybe some and, people just and need and to email him right away. This kind of stuff is going out to people that are that might be already have reached out to him or have mm. inquired or or like emailed on the website or or has he has a lead on. So this is kind of really reeling them in you you can also do the yes or yes close of saying uh uh, uh decide some version of making them decide uh check the calendar for availability or call joe now yeah and then that's all you, you, you just don't don't give me five different choices I, I i i do just want to underline one more time even if you are changed, if you have any element of time that says, I update this regularly, now booking for, I mean, again, years. It could be 22 and 23. Now, all of a sudden, your- This is your yearly booklet. That this is something that you do all the time because you book a lot. You are in demand. It is worthwhile. Like, you are putting forth the effort to update this thing you are so much more on the ball than just a guy who did it once. And you just look more authentic. you like, oh, this you, guy needs you to update busy. his... You, oh, he needs to update this damn thing. Okay, yeah, maybe right. I need to call now. Um, and that's why I like having the multiple options. But I also... I just don't like the way that they're presented. I think that the bullet point doesn't look right. I think you got to get like a... There's, a there's no reason why this can't be another glamour shot. Yeah. Yes. Make it another glamour shot and then say now booking for blank and then put all that information down below. But but mm -hmm. make yourself look good. The more that you are looking like a million bucks and they are then visualizing, oh, this is our Christmas party. This is our team building. This is our our, our, our theatrical run. Like because uh, I right. don't like him doing the the sales thing of like i'm on my touch. phone i'm on my phone i'm calling myself yeah. no you're you you're still performing you're still crushing and one thing going into the the last page here is um again thinking about Although the scroll th thinking about the scroll here right you've kind of got all this text here to get people into the fifth page you've got the text of the contact and then you've got these images you know the logo and the the joe on his phone and then it's the next page is like, but wait, not ready to talk by Jade Domino and uh, <laughs> by and Jade Domino. <laughs> Jade, Dom I guess he, he had maybe he had someone write this up. Oh, but it's it. it's, um, you know, and reasons not to, hide, you know, one last extra like, hey, you're not ready. Well, here's the last convincer. And I think that that's a really tough sell because you've just tried to hard sell people here with all of the contact info. You just tried to kind of put a button on it with the logo. Uh, and you, which I think would be all right if this was the last page, but then you've got this extra cell here, and it's like, okay, like, yeah, like I, if I, they're not sold here, then I don't know why you're doing no, this. No, that's that's worthless. What uh, uh, this is a good idea, but I don't what think. you what you need to do at that point is list. So uh, go back up to his testimonials. Yeah, he's got the the big awesome quotes, right? And then down below, he's got an aviation company. He's got Ford. He's got LinkedIn, right? Yeah. Tech, automotive, uh, uh, planes. Big money, they got a lot of cash. Take that off there mm -hmm. and and list that prominently. So in this final thing, list those three companies prominently along with every other person that you have ever worked for in your life directly yeah. or indirectly, but make that the avalanche of, all right, so, so you've identified that that's the moment where you're like, okay, somebody might've looked through all this and they weren't sold. What's going to sell them way more is the social proof of here are all the people in all the industries that have booked me throughout my throughout my career that I have worked for in any way. And I would include stuff you've worked for other people with and stuff you've helped with and like just logos that look cool. Just that, a giant wave yeah. of social oh. proof. Yeah. 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 Um, 
And I think that is really great on the last page because yes. it's because it's hey, if you're unsure, bam, 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 reassurance, reassurance, reassurance. Because this is fifty this, million Elvis fans can't be wrong. That that's yeah. what you want at 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 the very very last thing. I don't dislike the text and the copy here on this last page, but it's very cutesy, and it's the people that this will work on are not here. They're not at your last page. Uh, you know, I don't think that saying, well, you shouldn't hire Joe if your guests hate mystery. I, all right, like, I get it, but is that, if I'm here, how is this convincing me? Think, think about, and think also, about it's like, you know, when you're putting yourself in the in the perspective of the people that are going to read this, they're, you know, they got a lot on their mind. They literally just want a thing like for that EPK, you are just giving the people that will book you largely for corporate gigs, the ammunition that they can go upstairs if somebody upstairs has any question. And so what you want is like for them to say, like, they're not going to walk into the office and say, I don't know. He's not for somebody who hates mystery, but they are going to say, oh, he was hired at Ford. He was hired at LinkedIn. He was hired at this uh, aviation company and these million other companies especially if they are in the industry for which they want that you want to to book them for like you want to give them you want to give any hook you can where it's like oh well he also did blank he also did this other thing that's a rival company oh okay cool well we know that he does stuff that make lawyers slash engineers slash whatever happy yeah um and i think you need more crowd photos i think you need more stage photos i think the studio photos are good they you look very nice i think if you're if you're rocking crowds, you got to find a way to take a photo of some you more deep a deep more, photo. More like uh, that very last one of, of the entire thing is pretty good because we can uh, see the crowd. There, and... There's a depth to everything. Yeah, uh, but also like like uh, Brian said, crowds laughing, and I think mm-hmm. you know Brian. What do you think of the ethics of uh, maybe a little stock photo? action if it's good enough and it matches color wise yeah no or better yet go uh, <laughs> if you're allowed to per the terms of service have dolly create the perfect crowd shot for you uh uh yeah i mean i i, I would say showing visually right that you excite crowds and people are really really happy to see you perform regardless of if you personally have somebody have taken that shot don't be afraid to go to Pond 5 or wherever and find the exact crowd photo and put it right next to you so you can tell that visual story. I, crowds I are what caused this to happen. Crowds exactly. are what yeah. my focus are. No. Crowds are why you are coming to me because you want me to entertain your crowd. And I think the EPK is in a good, I think this is a very good start. Like, I think that, like, our advice hopefully helps helps out a lot, but um, I I think that this is a good start, and I I yeah. I feel the consistency. I feel you know there's a little bit of thematics with the font and the color choices, um, but yeah, I think t- you need to go to that next level. You've you've made this look really nice for the things that you need it to do to have all your information on, and now you need to be the next level up of what are the people who are reading this supposed to think on this page on yeah. this page? When are they supposed to? you know do x or y or z look yeah look at the quotes that you got and not even the quotes that you pulled but like the emails that you got from those clients that really liked you yeah and then strip out everything that makes you happy or talks about how good of a performer you are and pay very close attention to the solution you were for them and we fashion this entire epk based on you as solution plug and play easy professional crowd pleasing like regardless of whether or not you're a brilliant magician and you are a very 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 good magician uh that doesn't matter what matters is you are a solution you are plug and play that's what gets you booked yeah uh any other thoughts on this i i think we were pretty uh pretty in depth hopefully Joe yeah appreciate no, it I, I, I think it's great yeah. how about joseph diamond oh interesting no, oh big joe i was, I was trying to think joe of bad D. idea what about big big Joe D? What about Joe Biden live? Joe <laughs> Biden. <laughs> Joe, how about you change your name to <laughs> Joseph Joe Diamond? Robin. Joe <laughs> Joseph Diamond, Robinette Joe Biden <laughs> Jr. How's that for a stage Diamond name? Diamond Biden. <laughs> Diamond Biden. Diamond Biden. <laughs> Dark Biden Brandon. Brandon. All, That's right. Right. Uh, all right. All right. Any other things here? No, I, got, I, I got a biz call. I got to run to. Okay, so well, uh, thank, I, 
Thank you, everybody, for, for joining us here. If you've got something we should uh, maybe export, tear apart, <laughs> give me some, some feedback, uh, check out the information in the show notes for how to get in touch with us. Brian and Justin, thank you so much. It's yeah. been after. Those jellyfish, though. All right, guys. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us here. We will be back in a few hours with uh, Cord Killer. We're going to have one Bill Meeks on. We're going to talk about the Saul finale, what we do in the shadows. Uh, all sorts of good stuff. She Hulk on Cord Killers. Show yeah. Shulk in it. Uh, Justin R. Young on Twitch. You were live earlier today. I was. Yeah. yeah. So you can find you missed me. It. You can find me. He's argues all over the nation. I am He's simply all over the nation. I am simply all over the nation. All right, y'all. Have a good rest of your Monday. Yo, bye. Bye. bye.